Hello and welcome to a very festive edition of Kiadini's Kitchen. This week we're making Winter Veil cookies from World of Warcraft. So, as you may well know, the Feast of Wintervale is Warcraft's answer to Christmas, complete with Grandfather Winter, the Azeroth equivalent of Father Christmas, or Santa Claus, I guess. One of the items you can acquire during the Feast of Wintervale is a Wintervale cookie, which is shaped like a Christmas tree with green icing on top. Now, I'm no expert on World of Warcraft, but I do know that gingerbread is a fairly traditional type of biscuit to make and enjoy around this time of year, so I'm willing to bet that's what a Winter Veil cookie is made of. So with that in mind, here's everything you'll need to make your own Winter Veil cookies. 350 grams of plain flour, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, two teaspoons of ground ginger, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, 125 grams of butter, 175 grams of light soft brown sugar, one egg, four tablespoons of golden syrup, some icing sugar, I'm not sure how much, and a few drops of green food colouring. Oh, and a cookie cutter, because trust me, you do not want to be cutting these things out by hand, it is tedious. So step one is to combine the flour, bicarbonate of soda, ginger, cinnamon and butter in a mixing bowl and mix it until it looks like breadcrumbs. You can do this in a food processor if you are feeling fancy. I'll be doing it by hand because all of the budget for this entire year went on this cookie cutter. There we go, that's all those ingredients. So now we just need to start rubbing them together. There we go, hopefully you can see there that is nice and breadcrumby and in a kind of Christmas miracle, I've avoided completely schmutzing up my Christmas jumper, which is good. I probably should have said Winter Veil vale jumper there, but never mind. The next step is to stir in the light brown sugar. There we are, in goes the sugar. And then just need whoops, a wooden spoon. And get that all going in there. Already, even though there aren't any wet ingredients in this, it's not a dough yet. I have to say, this smells pretty amazing. So as you can see here, what we have now is basically a dry base for gingerbread, so it's time to add some wet ingredients, starting off with four tablespoons of golden syrup, which, believe me, sounds like a lot, because it is. Now, this syrup is gonna go, get my measuring spoon, into a separate bowl for now. Just gonna pour it in, which may not have been wise. Oh dear. It's going to go into a separate measuring bowl because what we're going to do is uh, beat an egg into this before we then add it to the dry ingredients. So we've got our syrup here. I'm just going to crack an egg into that and then beat those to combine. I'm sad. God. Is that even possible? Yes, there we go. Right, so there you can see, hopefully, that this mixture, while not perfectly combined, is at least a lot more mobile than the, um, the syrup would be by itself, which is why we mixed it in with the egg in a separate bowl, so that we can get it in contact with more of the dry ingredients as we then start to mix the dough, because if you just threw in the syrup, it would just form like a ball with a certain amount of the dry ingredients, but not all. And we obviously want to use everything in order to make a proper dough. So the next step is to throw it all in there. Ah, I'm gonna need to put the camera down. So the reason I've now got my hands in here is that after a point with just stirring, you're gonna reach a consistency of the stuff that's a bit like wet sand. And it behaves a lot like wet sand in that it will clump together in bits, but it also is very kind of loose like that. So um, what I'm now doing is getting my hands in there to really start actually compacting it together and make a proper dough. Makes a bit of elbow grease, but to be honest, 
I mean, you know what I'm like with dough and pastry, this is coming together a lot easier than my recent attempts. So, yeah, it's gingerbread. It's pretty foolproof. Right, so hopefully there you can see we've got a pretty decent gingerbread dough. So what I'm now gonna do is wrap that in cling film and leave it in the fridge for about 15 minutes. And while that's chilling in the fridge, we need to preheat the oven to gas mark four, which is 180 degrees centigrade or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. I'm just gonna get some extra plain flour here and start dusting down this surface quite lightly because the next step is to get hold of our dough and start rolling it out. So we've got our rolling pin here. Well, that's rolling out very nicely. We're looking to roll it out to a thickness of about half a centimeter. And then we're gonna start cutting shapes and putting them on this baking tray, which is over here, which I have already lined with baking parchment. And a half centimeter, I reckon, yeah. There we go, that's one. All right, so as you can see here, I've actually ended up with 12 pretty big uh, gingerbread Christmas trees. You could do it with a smaller cookie cutter and get more cookies out of them. And to be honest, I could probably get like one or two more out of the trimmings I've got there. But to be honest, I've run out of uh, baking tray space. So what I'm gonna do instead is just open up the oven. And these things are going in for about 12 to 15 minutes. until so they are a nice, light golden brown if this one will fit in the oven. Come on, there we go. Right. All right, so our Winter Vale cookies have come out of the oven. These ones seem slightly overdone. If anything, these ones are probably underdone, but never mind. We're going to allow them to cool completely now, and then we're gonna make some icing for them. All right, so our biscuits have completely cooled down now, meaning that they are safe to handle and check. And to be honest, I'm pretty thrilled with these, especially since I just realized I forgot to add bicarbonate of soda, and yet they have come out pretty darn well, so I'm officially going to say bicarbonate of soda, optional ingredient. Anyway, let's make some icing. So how do we make icing, Johnny? I'm so glad you asked. It's dead simple. You just get some icing sugar. Let's start out with about, uh, let's say that much. It's just over, uh, well, that's not a tablespoon. Um, and then what we've got to do Start adding water in and stirring it. And because this is a Winterveil cookie, I'm also gonna add a few drops or a small dribble on a more of green food coloring. Let's start out with that much. Basically, you just keep stirring until it forms, oopsie, an icing-like consistency. Yeah, it's getting there. Might have started out with too much water here, but we'll find out shortly. Yeah, ever so slightly too much water, so let's add a bit more icing sugar. There we go, that's a bit thicker, that's more like it. And you just keep mixing until it's nice and smooth and it's at the consistency you want. I'm gonna say about that. And then all you've really gotta do is get some of it on a spoon or a knife if you prefer. Let's do this one, this looks nice. Spread it on. Just sort of spread it around. 
on top of your cookie like that. Bit more on there. There we go. That's more like it. Com sa. And then you just leave it to cool. And then you're done. All right, so the icing is now set, so I can proudly say, oh look, a winter veil cookie. It um, looks, well to be honest, it looks quite anemic. I really should have added more coloring into the icing, but um, frankly, it's a bit late now. And given I missed out bicarbonate of soda, which given that it's a baking agent, is fairly important, um, I still think this looks pretty decent, but of course, looks are only one half of the thing. How does it taste? Hmm. Oh. Well, frankly, that's incredibly sweet, and to be honest, the um, the icing's a bit much for me. But apart from that, that's some pretty good gingerbread. There's actually some sort of heat being generated in the back of my throat by the amount of ginger. Um, two teaspoons, as it turns out, goes quite a long way in this recipe. But um, yeah, that is quite pleasant, actually. Oh god, it's ages since I've had gingerbread. That's really nice. Yeah, I'm all right with that, and I'm full of manner. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me uh, for this, the last Chiodini's Kitchen of 2017. I will be back next year, so I just wanted to say thank you for sticking with me all the way through this year, as we made a whole bunch of different things. Uh, beer from The Witcher, curry from Kirby, um, that mushroom cake that nearly made me throw up. Um, yeah, nobody's got like food poisoning this entire year, which is quite impressive, despite my best efforts. So yeah, thank you very much for coming along for the ride and for your recipe suggestions. Do you keep those coming in? Um, and that's about it from me, to be honest. There are lots of other videos on the Eurogamer channel. Some of them should be framing my face right now. So do click on one of those. Like and subscribe because it really helps us out. And most importantly, have a very Merry Christmas. It's Boxing Day, so that was yesterday. Had a very Merry Christmas. Bye!